This is the RetroBit Generations. It's an all-in-one gaming device that hooks right up to the television and plays a wide selection of 8 and 16-bit games from the 1980s and 1990s. It's coming out around the same time as the Nintendo Entertainment System Classic Edition, a mini console that plays games like Super Mario Bros. 3, Double Dragon 2, and Star Tropics. The Retro Bit Generations may not offer games like Final Fantasy and Metroid, but with more than 100 games from companies like Capcom, Data Ease, Jalico, and Irem, it made me wonder if this tiny box is actually a more attractive package than the NES Classic Edition. So let's take a look at the games and see how these two consoles stack up. After posting my first video about the NES Classic, I was quickly inundated with comments about the lack of Capcom games. Sure, people were excited to play Ghosts and Goblins and Mega Man 2, but what about Bionic Commando, Gunsmoke, and Mighty Final Fight? It certainly felt like there were a lot of missed opportunities. But that's certainly not the case when it comes to the retro bit generations. This plug and play device is loaded with Capcom greats, including 1942, 1943, Bionic Commando, Captain Commando, Commando, X Xs, Forgotten Worlds, Ghosts and Goblins, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Gunsmoke, Sun Sun, and more. It's still missing games like Codename Viper and UN Squadron, but the advantage clearly goes to Retrobit Generations. While the NES Classic Edition is filled with mostly first-party Nintendo releases, you will find the occasional third-party game. The Retrobit Generations takes a different approach, partnering with companies like Data East, Irem, and Jalico. The reason this is important is because a lot of these games have been unavailable for decades. And in fact, many of these games have never been officially released in the United States. Some of the standout titles include Holy Diver, a brutally difficult horror game that has been stuck in Japan for nearly three decades. I'm also happy to see R-Type back in action, since those shitters have all been pulled from Virtual Console, Xbox Live Marketplace, and the PSN Store. And don't forget about Ignition Factor, arguably the best firefighting game ever made. It's a little disappointing that popular titles like Bad Dudes and Heavy Barrel were left out of the package, but it's hard to complain when Kid Nicky Radical Ninja is in the mix. The Retro Bit Generations has the clear edge when it comes to Data East, Irem, and Jalico games. Third-party games are fine and all, but what got people excited about the NES Classic Edition was the prospect of playing your favorite first-party Nintendo games. Chances are, you're not buying the mini-console to play Double Dragon 2 or Bubble Bobble, but rather The Legend of Zelda, Super Mario Bros. 3, Metroid, Kirby's Adventure, Dr. Mario, and even Punch-Out. So if your goal is to replay Star Tropics or Final Fantasy, then the Retrobit Generation is not for you. This time, the advantage goes to the NES Classic Edition. One thing I really like about the Retrobit Generations is that it represents more than one classic game console. Like Nintendo's offering, the mini console offers its fair share of NES games. But it also features titles found in the arcades and on the Game Boy and Super NES. Understandably, the NES Classic sticks to the 8-bit games that made the console famous. There's certainly nothing wrong with that approach, but I like that the 100 games found in the RetroBit device span several generations of systems and handhelds. There's also a nice balance of genres. While the NES Classic Edition features a lot of popular 2D action games, the Retro Bit Generations gives us a number of interesting sports games. And it's not just the three bases loaded titles, but also the Black Bass, Ring King, Ten Yard Fight, Hoops, and Major Title Golf. The package also comes with a wide selection of old school beat em ups, including Tough Enough, Brawl Brothers, The Peacekeepers, and Rival Turf. Sure, these aren't exactly the most popular brawlers. But don't forget that it also comes with Knights of the Round and Captain Commando. Ignore genres for a moment. 
I'm most impressed by the games you wouldn't expect to see. When was the last time Pinball Quest or Hero Pinball Party were given a second life? The same could be said about Rocky Rodent, who remains one of the most 1990s mascot characters ever created. Every time I look through the list, another curious choice pops out, like Astyanex, Kickle Cubicle, Jim Power, and Varth Operation Thunderstorm. These are not the type of games that normally get modern ports. So, once again, I have to give the advantage to the retro bit generations. Obviously, I haven't played the NES Classic Edition or the Retro Bit Generations. They're still months away from release. But I do own a six button controller for the Genesis and a standard Nintendo Entertainment System game pad. So I think it's fair to come to an early judgment. While I'm sure there are people who want the authenticity of the NES controller, I have to admit that my adult hands get all cramped up every time I use one for an extended amount of time. I'm gonna choose comfort here, and I definitely see myself opting for the fake Genesis pad. Of course, your mileage may vary depending on how much you like the two controllers, but I'm giving this one to the retro bit generations. It's hard to know what's inside either of those two plug-and-play devices, so there's really no point in speculating about the hardware. What we can talk about are the bells and whistles associated with each device. In the case of the NES Classic Edition, many gamers were disappointed that there wouldn't be a slot for the SD card or a way to add more games over time. Once again, the retro bit generations has gone a different direction, including an SD slot, allowing you to load and transfer saved games. The press release also suggests that more titles will continue to be announced leading up to the launch. Both systems are limited in frustrating ways, but the retro of bit generation seems like it's going in the right direction. So this is the moment in the show where I have to slow down and remind myself that I'm basing almost all of this on what two companies have said publicly. I haven't played either of the two plug-and-play devices, so it's impossible to know which is best. There is a chance that even with all these games, the Retrobit Generations turns out to be a poorly constructed machine that has a hard time emulating those various systems. There are a lot of ways something like this could go wrong, so we won't know how good either of these two machines are until we have a chance to check them out for ourselves. Assuming they work as advertised, both the NES Classic Edition and the Retro Bit Generations look to be a fantastic deal. Neither has a monopoly on great games. There are certainly standouts on both machines. Nintendo fans will probably prefer the Marios and Zeldas, while those looking for a variety of rare oddities will find a lot to like about the Retro Bit Generations. I love that the Generations is bringing a lot of those old Irem and Jalico games back into the spotlight and I'm a fan of the addition of arcade titles. It'll all come down to the execution, but based solely on this list, I think the Retro Bit Generations is better than the NES Classic Edition. Hey, thanks for watching me break down the differences between the NES Classic and the Retro Bits Generation. Disagree with any of my points? Well, then leave a comment below and let me know what you think. If you still want more about the NES Classic, then you should check out our video where we see what old school magazine critics said about those old 8-bit games found in the collection. I guarantee you're going to be shocked by how negative they were. Anyway, we have a bunch of previews and reviews coming up, so do me a favor and click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 